All right, guys, this is Rob with Miller Deer Tracking. I'm gonna show you step-by-step step exactly how I lay a scent trail for your pup or your dog to track, to learn, to be successful in tracking wounded big game, especially wounded white tails is what we're targeting today. So today I have my tracking shoes on. As I walk, it will put the print in the ground. I have my shot sight with hair right here. I'm gonna take a little bit of blood. I will not use all of that, just how I have it. I have a little hole punch in the top. I will spurt some out to get started. It takes the dog roughly 50, 60, 70 yards for the dog to identify the target. We call it locking on. So this will help assist the dog, especially a young dog. The dog I'll be running tomorrow will be Siren, she's a five month old. That will just help the dog to get focus. Uh, the main thing is, I'm going to put a little blood out here now, a couple drips, not a lot. As I start walking, I'm going to take a bunch of really short steps. This is really going to put a lot of scent down right here in the beginning. And again, that's about teaching the dog to lock on to this target scent of the wounded deer. As we get going, I'll be at a normal stride, but... The big thing is getting this dog locked on sooner versus later. As I'm going, I'm just putting down a couple droplets every 10 yards. Nothing crazy. Right now, the wind is to my back, so I'm going with the wind. And for me, that's another advantage to get the dog to focus. If we put the, the scent into the wind, the dog will be more head up versus going with the wind, the dog's gonna be forced to be nose down nose down is exactly what I want. So as I'm walking, I have these little markers I made up. Put out some markers as I go. So I'll help identify my trail tomorrow. So again, I'm just walking here. I'm still taking kind of medium steps right now. Realizing a wounded deer has got four legs, the body, the breath, body fluids, a ton more scent coming off a wounded deer versus a mock simulation track. So I'm just gonna, right now I'm gradually increasing my steps. I'm staying on this well-used deer run. One, this is gonna help keep my dog focal on a deer run versus just cutting across this tall weeds. It also makes it easier for me to read the dog. Now my steps are about almost at a normal pace. So this trail is gonna be a pretty different terrain. I'm gonna start here in this opening. We actually have pretty big winds right now. So this thing's gonna get blown around be really curious to see the dog's accuracy tomorrow. Uh, we're going to go into some pines. Pines can be troublesome for some dogs. I'm not really sure how my pup's going to do. Put out me another marker right here. Work my way into this opening. Now I'm at about three quarters of my normal stride. These hooves have just been thawed out this morning. I've done nothing to them other than mount them in my shoes. Some people use warm water to kind of get the, the glands opened up, loosened up. But these are just thawed out and mounted on my boots. As you can kind of tell, I've been going straight. And this is good because the main thing is I want to get this dog locked on. So going straight first. Sorry about all this. Now I'm going to follow this deer run. So it's kind of a soft right hand turn right there. I'm going to put a marker so I know I went on this side of the tree. Put the marker out. Because these little things, you actually, believe it or not, you'll forget. 
I've really cut back on my blood right now. I've really hardly put any out. Now I'll hit a, a lane. I'm gonna take this lane down and make a right. So there's another turn to the left. Now I'm gonna do some really short steps right here. Because one, we're in short grass, so it doesn't hold the scent very well. But on that turn, by taking baby steps, you're increasing the scent. That's gonna help teach that pup or dog to make that turn. Now this particular property has got a lot of deer, a lot of rabbit, a lot of turkeys. So there's a good deer run. I'm actually hard 90 right here. I think I'm gonna make the turn right here. That's a hard 90 turn. Again, I'm doing baby steps. Gave a little bit of blood there. Help that dog figure out we made a hard turn. Odds are, dog's gonna blow past it, which is okay, because then you're gonna learn to read body language as that dog makes the, the correction. Like I was saying, some dogs struggle with pine. My older dog, Cyber, struggled with pine. My younger dog that I have now, Sergeant, he's he does fine in pine. Okay, now we're gonna come up to another lane. Time to make another hard turn right here. Hard turn, baby steps, a little bit of blood in the turn. Now there's deer running back on here, running parallel to this lane. I'm gonna take this deer run. Put out a marker even though I think I can remember this. Let's put out a marker just to make sure. I'm gonna follow this deer run kind of around this deadfalls. Now this deer run going straight through here. I'm gonna make a little turn off it. Now we're off a of deer run. I'm gonna put out another marker. So I have it. Can't really find a good spot right here. Marker's out. Now I'm gonna try to make this deer, this mock trail between four, 500 yards. Since I'm using my phone to record this, I'm not able to look at my GPS that I have running. So I'm gonna have to just guess it. Looks like a good spot to make a turn. Gonna force a dog to choose a route. I'm gonna take the easier turn here and keep my strides normal. Try to keep this video to about 12 minutes, 15 minutes at most. Come through this little section and put a marker out. So it's not so boring to watch. You can learn subtle things. Uh, this particular track, I'm not gonna add a back track to it. Whenever I lay a training track, I normally like to add one back track or what I call a V-back. So you kind of make a V-back, a slight angle. A lot of dogs cut the corner and they actually never actually do the, the V-back or double back. But it's just good to challenge yourself, challenge your dog way to learn All right. now we're going to cross another lane up here shortly Put out another marker I gotta be probably pushing right now solid 300 yards if I had to guess I have not put out no blood for a good 100 yards, but between that was a good 30, 40 yard gaps of just a half dozen droplets. So again, now we're gonna go down. I'm gonna stay tighter to this edge because the wind is blowing left to right. So I'm gonna stay down the edge of this instead of being out in that wide open. Losing some stuff here, me. 
second. Okay. So right here, looks like a good spot to kind of make a wound bed. I'm going to grab a stick. Rough it up here a little bit. Put some blood in there. I'm gonna do a bunch of steps with the tracks, a whole bunch. Really beat it down with the hoof scent. Now, we came in this way. I'm gonna come off on a slight angle, hard 90, slight V back into this woods. I'm gonna arch around and finish over here by a tree stand. It kind of works out nice, I kind of have a deer run cutting in right here. This works out. All right. Come around the junk pile. This junk pile is going to have a lot of rodents. Let's put on a marker here. Twelve minute mark almost. I get going. And this is going to be kind of a, a loop. Should work out nice. Hopefully I'm at my distance I wanted. My strides at a normal walking stride. There's gonna be no more blood hitting the ground. Hopefully now your dog is following the target scent. Good easy trail to walk out on. So the downfall would be, because we laid that mock trail right in that corner, that siren overshoots this and works way out here and reconnects. If that's the case, that's fine, because in all reality, we don't know if that deer made that turn. So you gotta let that dog work. And after a period of time is when you decide to back up and do a restart. But if this was a mock blind track, you wouldn't know that I just did a loop around the junk pile. So the main thing during training is give that dog as much freedom and much time to problem solve since you know the problem. Do not quickly correct them. All right, we're going to go right here, put a marker up. So tomorrow when I come back in here, I'll come in and put the prize at the end. I'll come in here a little bit. All right, that's good enough. So tomorrow I'll come put the prize here and I'll film her tracking it and you guys can see the results.